I don't believe that you can fix someone. That was never my goal here. Daniel was 14 when the bomb hit. Hiding behind a tree saved his life. But after losing both of his arms, he said he wished it hadn't. He had lived two years without arms. Daniel is just one of over 50,000 amputees left in the wake of the bloodiest war Africa has ever known. The plan was to go to Sudan and 3D print prosthetic arms for Daniel. <laughs> but that was just the beginning. We wanted to leave his village with the tools and knowledge of how to create these prosthetics long after we had gone. This is gonna be the hand that we work on for Daniel. I still pinch myself the fact that I was able to teach a group of people to print. Many who had never worked with computers before and never seen a 3D printer before, and I taught them how to make arms. That's what technology has the potential to do. I have a process. And the process is you commit, and then you figure out how the heck you're gonna do it. The second I saw the story about Daniel, I didn't need to reread it. When you look at a picture of a boy with bandaged stump arms, I mean, what do you do? Do you just, oh, that's too bad, and close the computer and go to bed? What do you do? You can't put the pieces back together in someone else's life. But maybe if we print them new pieces, they'll start to learn to put them back together themselves.